lucky for me for having trouble with my hands because then I had to start encompassing all the things that I knew and test all those things and see how I could incorporate them and put them together. Um, I started out basically as a carver, a direct carver, which means I never did drawings. I just went to the material and started carving directly. And I had finally built it up so that I thought, hey, I can carve styrofoam. It's not like you know, the mallet and all that stuff, but I can use saws and ripplers and stuff and make the farms. So I start out with styrofoam and carve the form. And then from there, I could, I could do several things. But with this piece in particular, I went to paper compound. So paper compound, and which was so funny, because I'm using the subtractive process to carve the sculpture. Then I'm using the additive process to get this additive material and start building on top of this form. And after that was coming up with a coloring. And that was a process. Gesture has been always been very important to me and I'm, I'm sure to anybody who really wants to understand form and space and movement in form and space. Um, so a lot of times I will sum up an idea or a form very quickly as up in these gestural studies. And so that kind of approach I have been doing a lot but in different series. Um, one series, and I have them over there, was a, lot, uh, a leaf series. And the underdrawing is uh, wet medium, ink, wash, or sometimes they even use black gesso. And then after that's dry, I'll start working into it and pulling out what I want, but working into it in color. In the case uh, of the drawings over there, it's all Prismacolor pencil. Um, so anyway, drawing upon that, that was a series about death. The series is not finished because all kinds of things came up. My, you know, my dad got sick, my mother got sick, and I was doing it, and then I got sick. So I'm coming back to that series. And um, the underdrawing was not done with a brush, but I decided I'd go outside, be right with the earth, you know, and start picking up dead material, old dried grass and old leaves, crumpled up broken sticks, twigs, and those were my tool to make the mark making. Then I started going on, on starting to work on the underdrawing, I call it the underdrawing, with the next layers, with the pencils. Um, the, the sculpture that's in the museum is called Sustenance, and it's about food, past not just physical food, but food for thought and all that. So I had to use a, a whole bunch of different reds to come up with that red. It wasn't just taking one red and cadmium or something and just painting it, because it still had to be three-dimensional. And sometimes just a flat color flattens it. So it was a, a very big learning experience. See, I was, I was born in New Orleans, but when I was five, we moved to Alexandra, because my dad was doing his residency stuff. And then we moved to Maumu, and nobody did any art. and. Even when I was in high school, there was one book on art, only one. Um, so when I was, I don't know, um, do you know the movie, not the new version, the Moulin Rouge? Well, that movie came to the Joy Theater in Mamou. And I'm sitting there, and there's this little man. It starts out with this little man sitting at the table with his cognac or whatever and drawing on a tablecloth. Ah, I was fascinated. You see that? He can draw on a tablecloth even, you know. I was fascinated too because I already had gotten the message you can't do art as an adult. Here was an adult doing art. I came back home from that film. I was up all night. I had my little rough tablets and my watercolors. I drew all night. I drew every character in that movie. You know, I'm, I don't know when I went to bed, but I remember the next morning, my mom and dad were just staring because there was just drawings over the whole floor. You know, that was it. That did it for me. Well, when I was a carver, it was all wood carving tools. When I do stone carving, it's all chisels and those kind of tools. I'm not really a modeler. Um, and that's what's so strange about the pieces where I have to carve out a styrofoam and then put this additive thing on there. So um, this is. They usually use this just for plaster when they do it. And you know, you mix up plaster so it looks like heavy whipped cream. 
You just pick up some and put it on. Now some people will get, uh, whatever, really habitual with it and they'll just dong, 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 and just put it, just like you watch people with cake icing. Some people will do that. Um, I find that I'm, if I'm building something heavy, I will put it on kind of like that, but then I'll have smaller amounts and smaller amounts because I want to control the surface. Think about the surface so that a blind person could come and not only understand the form, but feel all those transitions. And they, they are so sensitive to it, and the artist should be sensitive too. Now, this is an ideal, of course. If texture is an art element, which is supposed to be, then you gotta do something with it. What I have run into 99% of the time is the student is very anxious to, to develop their style. That's what they want. And I tell them, don't worry about your style. It's there already, no, no matter what you do. And it's just a matter of you allowing it to unfold, you know, and, and not to feel the pressure of having to be, you know, you are the artist, you are original, and this is your work, and what is your work about? All that stuff drives me crazy. Just go ahead and do your stuff and see what happens.